At the turn of the 19th century, Europe was just coming out of the Napoleonic Wars and heading straight towards industrialization, which absolutely changed the balance of power in the world, leading to European powers becoming the ultimate authority and eventually colonizing and subduing most of the planet in the process. However, whilst all of this was happening, there was one ancient empire, the Ottoman Empire, which was on its last legs. It was in fact known as the Sick Man of Europe, due to the fact that despite in previous centuries having been the strongest European power, the 19th century saw it lose more than half of its empire, and what was left of it was not industrialized and was really struggling to match the agricultural even output of other countries in Europe, alongside falling behind in technology as well as political reforms, which led to the eventual loss of the entirety of the Balkans by the end of the 19th century. 19th century, well technically they lost the entirety of the Balkans at the start of the 20th century after the Balkan Wars, but let's say half of it was lost in the 19th century. They lost the Egyptian parts, albeit they did manage to recover some afterwards, and lost complete control over most of the Middle East as it is. However, in Victoria 3 we have the chance to revive the Ottoman Empire, bring it back to its former glory, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. The initial situation of the Ottomans is really really pitiful we have a very weak army however despite being weak these units are at least line infantry we have some cannon artillery and some lancers i am of course using the 1.5 beta patch in doing this uh, particular campaign because i feel like the beta patch has reached the point in which it is actually playable there's few to little bugs and the army mechanics and changes are so significant now that i have to say i'm really really enjoying it we don't have the old system as it was before now when we go to development we only have the general training here assigned to the entirety of the army and then each individual army can choose its own type of uh, units be it infantry artillery or the reconnaissance units for that matter and there's a lot more features that we're going to be exploring in today's uh, video of course that were added to 1.5 i feel like 1.5 is the stepping stone towards making and reforming really not making a uh, reforming completely the combat mechanics of the game which was definitely needed now as you guys know we have the Tanzimat uh, problems here we got to do some uh, reforms we got to either modernize the army bureaucratic reform suppress the separatist educational reform or urbanization as well as the reclamation of Syria this has to be done in order to get rid of the sick man of Europe once we have four Tanzimat's uh, journal entries done we get rid of this horrible horrible modifier here all of these are in fact pretty bad so we're gonna have to fix everything as we go along we lost our core provinces in Adana, Kebab, and Aleppo. So, of course, our first war is obviously going to be against the Egyptians to take back the Syrian lands. In the early part of the campaign, it's actually a little bit easier to get back your Egyptian lands because a lot of the times, most of the Western powers don't give a schnapps about this area. So, it's just you against the Egyptians, which actually have a few less uh, brigades at the start of the campaign than we do. So, we're going to take advantage of that. Before that comes to play, though, we're going to go to our government here right now uh, local governors and intelligentsia are ruling the country but we're gonna try and get some of the other political factions in charge especially the industrialists the petite bourgeoisie and even the armed forces are not bad we might be bolstering them a little bit so we uh, get their support up and eventually get them in the government also legislation wise we are absolutely trash I mean this is really really bad right here man we still have this for example that we need to get rid of 54% opposition is pretty bad let's see how sir them is because this also is pretty bad so i think surf them might work a little bit more we need to change that we need to change hereditary bureaucracy also to appointed bureaucrats and from autocracy to go down this oh actually landed vote oh okay boys okay holy snaps this is really really good so we have three options i'm gonna of course try first and foremost to go to homesteading if this works that's gonna be awesome if not we'll cancel it up try the other two uh reforms and see which one sticks essentially let's go over to our technology we are pretty far behind with our tech unfortunately so we have to catch up with that too if we are to match the western powers in this campaign so let's start by getting the cotton gin it's it really is very shocking that we don't even have this yet but it is historical 
because the Ottomans were very, very late to catch up with these kind of basic technologies as they were seen basic in Western Europe by 1836 anyway. Going over to our market, we see we have massive shortages of small arms, coffee surprisingly, and uh, pretty much everything else. We have one food industry, 19 textile, which is very accurate as well since even today, Turkey, which of course is the descendant of the Ottoman Empire, has a lot of textile manufactories as it is. Most uh, clothing is realized either in Turkey, China, or India in modern times. It wasn't much of a difference back then apparently too. Well, there was a difference of course. We do have two arms industries, so that's not so bad overall. Let's see uh, how is this doing. We have coal mines, lead mines, sulfur mines, not even one of each. That is really, really bad again. Need logging camps since we're gonna need a lot of wood to build stuff. So let's go ahead and start doing that first. We have four of these in Bulgaria. Let's uh, queue this up. Let's get a let's max out the logging camps in uh, Bulgaria first. Check over here. We could change to iron frame buildings. Our economy would not be able to sustain that, unfortunately, for too long because we do not have much iron or tools for that matter. So after I finish with the uh, logging camps, I'm gonna switch on over. I'm gonna build a couple of tooling. Oh, we have tools in uh, Bosnia. Wow. Okay. Let's get three of these in Bosnia and let's also get some more iron mines from Skopje. Why not Macedonia? Three of these in Macedonia. You know what? I'll try see if it works. If we manage to not have a complete collapse of our economy if we switch over to iron frame buildings. Speaking of Q, let's uh, queue up alt click three more buildings in Eastern Trace which is our capital so we can get at least five construction sectors from the get go. We're also going to change over to craftsman sewing because we do have a lot of silk production. We have four silk plantations now but we could potentially have a ton of silk produced and we will produce a lot of silk so we can increase that GDP earlier in the campaign. Speaking of, right now our market is uh, fairly small so we're gonna try and expand our market around the uh, area here by of course first and foremost uh, crushing the Egyptians and then basically getting all of the Arabian Peninsula before anybody else gets to it and reintegrate the Greeks and the Persians afterwards I guess. Essentially attack nations that are not gonna get supported by Western powers is what I'm trying to say really. I'm gonna add some taxes on services first off. Tobacco tax because tobacco gives a lot of money and people do use a lot of tobacco around here. Luxury clothes too and that's about it. We have an extra 500 authority points. We will first off of course encourage resource industry in Bulgaria where we're gonna have majority of our logging camps as well as in uh, the iron rich area of Skopje. We're gonna do the same thing. Encourage resources. Promote social mobility in our capital so we get more people. Educado essentially. And just honestly, majority of these uh, authority points are going to go towards edicts that help out with the uh, resource industry or manufacturing in Bosnia since we have those tooling workshops. Now we're building these in the same province where we already have established specific factories and tooling workshops and so on because we want to get the uh, economy of scale. Now as you can see here, we already have 21% economy of scale, meaning we're getting 21% more tools created here because of the edict and because we have a level 2 tooling workshop if this was say for example level 50 we would get 50 plus 20 percent economy of scale so we would get 70 percent more goods produced in that particular uh, province of that particular good so it's more efficient to build the same building or stack up the same building in one province to get more out of that particular good we're also going to be importing some small arms from nations that have a lot of it so let's do that now because we need a ton of small arms we don't want to have massive issues with our small arms production especially since we're planning to go to war in a few moments here i personally think the easiest tansy mats to get rid of of course are reclaim syria first and foremost when we take the lands from the egyptians then the bureaucratic reform is easily attainable by getting land-based taxation expelled as well as hereditary bureaucrats again changed army modernization is fairly easy you just got to get napoleonic warfare and 150 brigades or battalion, sorry, as well as not have any goods input uh, shortages. And of course, the educational reform just need to have a university that's uh, pretty much fully employed at level five and 20% literacy. We have 11% literacy right now, which is extremely bad. So we really need to work on these. Also going to be importing some more iron since we need that. We have a bit of a shortage of iron too. It's like 61 right now because of the shortage that we have, which is okay. Now after we've imported, it's 52, so significantly better. Same goes for tobacco and what else silk I'm just gonna temporarily import I will actually um, be producing more silk myself in a few moments here we do need to get more bureaucracy sadly so we're gonna need to build at least 
one or two uh, government administrations. Now, the best spot to build these, in my opinion, at the start would be in your capital or in Huda Vendigar, which is, again, a very, very sizable state. So let's get two of these done, one in each for the time being. We're going to keep them at the back of the queue, though, since we want to build the other stuff first before anything else. And, of course, we got a revolution because we're trying to revoke serfdom. So let's cancel that, as expected. That's going to be a little bit tougher to deal with. Let's try the other one here. Actually, this has a little bit more of a chance, 24%. So that's a little bit better than the 12% that we had for serfdom. Since I also want to get the industrialists in charge, I'm going to use 200 of my authority. That's why I saved 200 to bolster the industrialists. Hopefully, they're going to be more than just a minor faction or minor interest group very soon. Bro, we really cannot have any good things, can we? Again, revolution from the governors because they're not cool with this particular legislation change. Let's try a third, third time's a charm, right? That's what they say with the landed voting. This time, at least they're not flat out against uh, the uh, landed voting. So maybe it's going to work. Let's see. The first Ottoman army is doing pretty good. We have a hundred organization for it, which means it's 100% going to be winning most of the engagements. But the second one, because it started with no commanders, it has very little organization, 26. It's trickling up though, but at a very, very slow pace. So we just have to give it a little bit of time, I guess. Now that we hired four commanders, it's, uh, it's, it's going up a little bit faster. Without commanders, you you gain organization significantly slower so keep that in mind also here's a couple more things that are really cool that they added recently that not many people know about you can for example trade states so let's say for example here we could trade the state of Bulgaria for the state of East Prussia with the Prussians right obviously they're not gonna accept that but just it's 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 an interesting little feature that they've added that maybe can be used in the future depending on uh, what relations and what are the modifiers you have with targeted nations we will speaking of uh, increase our relations with the French and with the uh, Prussians. Who else can I increase them with? Uh, Russians probably hate my guts, don't they? Yep, they hate me. The Brits might like me. Oh, they're protective towards me. Hell yeah, I'm improving with them then. Now we do have four years to get ready for the war with the Mamluks, so that's quite a lot of time. They have how many? They got 108 battalions. We have 150. No, we have 145. So we're gonna get maybe 170 or so by the time that the war starts, I guess. It's not about the amount of units that we have to be fair it's about the quality of said units and how well trained and equipped they are so that's what actually matters in the war to come oh hell yeah boys a 15 percent success chance for landed voting hells to the yes one of the coolest things that they've added with the 1.5 version of victoria 3 is the fact that now not only do you see the units on the map so look at this we have our ottoman boyos over here with the unique sprite for the ottomans on the map itself but if say we were to mobilize another one of our armies from the Caucasus and we deploy them over to the front you see the actual route that they take with the purple color on the map here. By the way, since this is early access, I should probably tell you that a lot of these things will be changed. So whenever 1.5 is actually released, you might see uh, this purple line completely changed. There you go. You can actually see the units moving with these carts on the map towards the front line and you can see it uh, once it reaches the front line it establishes the camp and everything that's pretty cool not to mention you can also have multiple fronts now and you can have multiple battles at the same time in a front so honestly a ton of changes that are absolutely glorious and really good for the game have been added already and this is not even uh, out of the beta version now i'm not adding any actual generals to these armies because we're fighting one battalion that's it i don't think we need to add anything to 15 battalions that are fighting one battalion you know what i'm saying let's also make sure we uh, designate our strategic objective which is obviously just this is the only state that they have and after one very very short battle we won yay i love how you can actually see the enemy armies just retreating away in what's left of uh their country i guess and there you go we got hail now let's continue with the rest of this area it's actually so cute seeing my units just chilling by the tent here man just adding a couple of sprites in the game made a huge freaking difference in my opinion i'm glad to see this i really hope that it gets even more than just this and we see the sprites actually fighting in the combat itself not just like this you know like some proper fighting between the sprites by the end of a 1-5 patch or maybe in the future let's see also gonna make more iron mines in um in Skopje. let's go up to eight iron mines for now since we actually can't sustain that minus 27 000 is really not as bad as it seems oh 
we got landed voting, boys! Hell yeah, we're no longer an autocracy, yo! Oh, this is definitely the right way towards becoming a proper civilized country, man. Alright, let's, uh, let's change this up too so we get a little bit more happiness with our government people. Once more, an extremely fast war against the five battalions that Najd had. In case it's not really obvious also, the reason I'm doing these really quick wars in Arabia now at the start, when I could be focusing on improving my economy a little bit more, is because in a few years, the British Empire is gonna try to get their hands on the entirety of this region, and I wanna get it before the British arrive in these lands, because this eventually is gonna get oil, it's gonna get a lot of really good resources that I'm gonna need in the later part of the campaign, which we will do, of course, if we get 6,000 likes on this video in the first week after it's out, so I know you guys are interested in seeing the continuation. Alright, we got those two states. Ooh. Look at that. Border-wise, we've grown, boys. We've definitely grown. But don't let that fool you. For now, it's mostly just sand that we managed to get. That's it. There's three states here that have no troops. So, of course, attacking them is going to be no struggle. Because, look, zero, man. Not even a single battalion. <laughs> this is our first naval invasion because uh, we don't have, for some reason, a direct land border with them. So, yeah. This uh, here is an impassable terrain, apparently, in the south bit of the Najd area. So, we have to navally invade them. But that's not too big of a deal. Don't worry. We have a pretty strong navy, surprisingly. And we got this in the bag. 88% success chance for a dedicated police force means it's pretty much passed. Since it is passed, we're gonna need more of those admin buildings. So, let's queue up a couple more here and I'm gonna need a little bit more construction sectors too I think let's bring this bad boy up to 10 construction sectors for now and look at those we got the troopers on the map you can see them advance as they're disembarking from the ships all of these lines you see here now by the way it means that eventually once the patch is released there's gonna be something to show this happening it's not just gonna be these really weird lines that you're seeing on my screen and we just got dedicated police force, nice. So now that we've acquired this uh, Kathiri state here, we don't need to navally invade the, the two neighbors, which we're gonna be attacking up next. The moment of truce is here, everybody. We're reasserting our authority in the Syrian lands, and we've uh, declared war, so we get this entire strip of land back from the Egyptians, and in the process, fix our economy, because this is where most of the Egyptian wealth is actually lying in. This, of course, is also a first step, because we will be attacking again and taking the rest of Egypt afterwards. <laughs> we want to take all of our previous holdings, okay? Not just this. This gave a lot of relations with everybody, so we can get both the French and the English on this uh, war. If we need them, let's see. If the Russians join, we can get one of the other nations to help us on the Russian front, I guess. Oh, this is good. This is really freaking good getting that defensive pack with the french means that we might get an alliance afterwards with the french and france is by far the strongest nation and the start of vicky 3 at least russia declares neutrality that's pretty good since uh i don't i cannot actually call anybody and i i actually went to set all of these as my primary goals so that in case they back down i get everything but they didn't back down and that's fine because one versus one we are easily gonna crush them now in fact i don't mind doing a couple of cheeky naval invasions to to uh break their morale and spirits let's say so let's go ahead and get this bad boy here naval invasion in the south and we're gonna set the smallest army that we have. Has no commanders. Let's actually assign a commander to this now. All right, there you go. Anybody is fine, doesn't matter. There we go. Assign that. Confirm. Six weeks. They're gonna get a pretty disgusting diversion in the south bit of uh, Egypt since they're gonna have to move their units from the north to defend that massive flank. Hey, <laughs> boy! Continue to advance, my lord. I don't know why I call these guys my lord. That's just weird. Egypt looks a little bit more like uh, Ottoman to me, boys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, enforce, come on. Give me all your stuff, Egypt. Give me all your stuff. There you go. First war out of the way. Next war, we're going to take what's left of the Egypt. Well, it's probably going to be two wars to fully take all they have. But yeah, I did let them capture Tripoli. I didn't send any of my units to the Tripolitanian front because I just don't give a schnapps about Tripoli. But don't let them know that, though. Let's also get five silk plantations in Aydin before we continue building uh, our main industrial buildings, such as the lead mine, which I really need one right now. I'm going to build one in uh, Erzurum. And same goes for the sulfur. I really need to get some sulfur apparently we can get one in Mosul why not we have a 
pretty high amount of population over there. Look how beautiful we look. In just a few years, we managed to double both in size and economically, we're getting a lot better. So let's continue with the expansion here because we all know those sneaky British are around the corner waiting for the opportunity to come in here too. The cool part about taking Oman out is that we also will have a little bit of a foothold over here in uh, future Pakistan, I guess. And then from there, we can expand into the Makran, Baluchistan, and all of these areas which are pretty strong when it comes to exotic resources like opium and stuff that the Europeans don't normally have and that we will need in the mid to late part of the campaign. Uh, what now? Did they just give up? Without a fight? What? Wait, why did I not take this though? No, I didn't have this as my primary goal and that's why they gave up, isn't it? Oh, dude. Yeah, okay, that sucks. Okay, never mind. I made the other two my primary goal, so at least we got that going for us, right? Oh, you scumbags! Bro, the British just made a protectorate out of the Trucial States. No! Ah, I knew this was gonna happen. I should have been a little bit faster, man. On the bright side, at least we managed to get Bahrain, which is also gonna have quite a little bit of oil in the future. Hey, yo, hold up a second. Yemen actually pushed us out of here. They won a battle against us, despite being outnumbered 3-1. to one. Obviously, we're still winning the war. Kudos, kudos to those Yemenis. They're definitely uh, hanging in there. And we got 0% chance for professional army so we might as well just cancel this okay let's check our declared interest because i'm fairly certain we can get another one now maybe i can start with a little bit of sneaky expansion into south america when nobody's looking vassalize argentina and chile for that classic south america victoria three strat that i do in pretty much all of my videos at this point and since Hejaz is essentially a tributary of the Egyptians, I cannot attack him. I have to attack him. I gotta attack the Egyptians again. So I have here another Tanzimat though. The uh, Tanzimat of reclaiming Egypt. I just need upper, middle, lower Egypt and Sinai. So that's one, two, three, four. That's doable in a single war. And it's gonna be a good four point something million GDP. So that's gonna be a lot of uh, infamy. Let's check what our infamy is at now. We have 19.3 infamy that's fine as long as we're below 100 infamy we're a-okay as long as i'm concerned the radicals from gaining infamy is not as big of a deal as getting the entire world to coalition against you once you have 100 infamy right i've canceled a few of my edicts because i feel like it's a little bit more crucial to bolster the popularity of my industrialists right now my government's not doing amazing i've got an illegitimate government with only 19 because the obviously the other side is a lot more popular so we got to lower that popularity and boost up this uh, agrarian party as they like to call themselves which has all the good legislation that i want should have done that a while back i am aware don't worry i am very much aware we're also in the process of taking back the uh, rogue Greek state here. So we have uh, a lot nicer borders in the Balkans, of course. <laughs> End of the day, this is what the game is about, right? It's about getting the best borders you can possibly get. Of course, it's a very swift war since the Greeks didn't get support from anybody else. Surprisingly, Serbia is getting a lot more support from the West than the Greeks are. Let that sink in, Greek people. Let it sink in very well for you, okay? Just think about it for a sec. What does that even mean? There you go. Rebels have been uh, de-rebelized, I guess. It's totally a word, by the way. I didn't just invent that. Hello, we just got the army modernization completed, meaning we are one more Tanzimat closer to success. Okay, now we can change the hereditary bureaucracy, hopefully with the elected one. We tried with the appointed guys, but we didn't have enough uh, legitimacy for our government, so we had to change things around. Even though we did boost the industrialist, it would take a little bit longer than I'm happy with. So elected bureaucrats is really not bad also end of the day anything is better than hereditary ones so that would give us one more time in the process too as long as we change the other couple of legislations also. I've also changed all of the remaining uh, edicts that I had or decrees that I had to promote social mobility so we get some more education access and we get another Tanzimat done by having 20% literacy and now it's also time for a yet another war against the Egyptians. It's only 1.7 infamy because we did get claims on the Egyptian lands when we did the other Tanzimat so check it out boys. A return state, a middle, upper and lower Egypt is extremely little infamy considering this is like 4.5 million GDP alone just from these particular states and we also might get the support of the British so let's see what happens come on dude 60% election chance I mean the success chance please please pass 
And now I'm gonna pull the exact same cheese I pulled before with uh, using my fleets to navally invade the Egyptians when they're not looking, go behind them and just wreak havoc in the process. Naval invasions, still extremely powerful in this game. It's essentially how you easily win every single engagement. Holy schnobadobs. Damn, the Tripolitanian front's been advancing, boys. <laughs> They've been really advancing. And I like to see that we have the pyramids on the map too. I'm not sure if that was in the previous patch. It might have been in the previous patch. I'm not 100% on about that, but look at these units. Love the sprites. Absolutely love the sprites. Also like how they have different colors based on what nation the sprites belong to, you know? You know, overall, I have to say that the changes that have happened to Viki 3 with this patch have made it 10 times more playable and 10 times more enjoyable than it ever was before and that's 100% because of the military changes like I'm actually having fun doing wars and you know doing a little bit of tactics extra multiple battles in each front and so on it, it makes a difference you know it makes a huge freaking difference yeah so essentially because these guys are locked over here fighting my uh, main armies I'm using my smaller armies to just push in and get the uh, strategic states which I need to lower their war support which in turn means they're gonna eventually capitulate even though they're winning on this front, they're still losing the war itself. And ooh la la, we just got those. And that's our third Tanzimat done, by the way. The fourth one is automatically going to finish in a couple of years once we get uh, this suppressed separatist not having any secession movement reach past 50% for 15 years. So we already won essentially the early part of the campaign. And look how big we are now and how much more we're going to absolutely snowball in the next few years. Since now we got not only the GDP from the Egyptians and the armies from the Egyptians, right? Because that's where the majority of their barracks were in Cairo and Beni Suef here, middle and upper Egypt, or sorry, lower Egypt. We also have the uh, extra population, 28 million and growing. And we're close to getting elected bureaucrats. So let's go, boys. Let's go. I'm so hyped for this run. Like, I've never, I, I don't remember the last time I've been so hyped for a Vicky 3 run, I'll be honest. Oh, schnapps, I forgot. I gotta incorporate a lot of states that I have not yet incorporated there you go 44 90 23 not so bad not so bad at all yeah we're gonna make full states out of every single thing that we conquer here we're essentially bringing back the old ottoman empire to its old highest extent of borders i guess we are truly revitalizing it not just economically and militarily but also border wise hey we got it boys hello elected bureaucrats amazing romanian declare a union oh boy oh boy Adopt the protect secret goal towards Moldova. We will not approve of this. It must be condemned for its actions. You know what? I probably should not con uh, should not uh, approve of it, but because I am Moldovan myself. Hell yeah, boys. Full power to Moldova. I want to see a unified Romania right here. Let's do it right now. It's going to get the full support of the Ottoman Empire. Historical gaming? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. I tried getting homesteading, but uh, the landlords were basically rebelling. So I decided to go with tenant farmers, which is going to give power to the landowners. But they're not rebelling. So it's better than serfdom. It gives less power than serfdom does to the landlords too. Since serfdom gives 50%, whilst this one only gives 25%. And by getting tenant farming, it's going to be easier for me to get homesteading later down the line. And just overall, anything is better than serfdom. So hopefully it passes this time. It does have the support of the Sunni Ulema for some reason. So they're pretty powerful in my country right now, right? One more thing I like about the new patch is that the United Principalities, which is basically the precursor to Romania prior to Moldova and Wallachia, officially just uh, dissolving any sort of government they might have had and created creating the Romanian government. This is how it was essentially historically. And also these two provinces were given to the Moldovans by the Russians for some of their help in certain wars against the Ottomans, if I remember correctly. So yeah, it's pretty historical. The patch is actually getting the events done as it should have been doing at the release date of Vicky 3 really. Also, love to see this. Check it out. 900,000 less supporters for the landed voter, for the landowners, whilst uh, the Freedom and Accord Pats gained 1.12 million voters extra. Hot damn, yes. And we also did the fourth Tanzimat, Suppress Separatism completed. There you go. Now we uh, have all of the ones needed for the Sick Man of Europe. So we essentially got rid of the Sick Man of Europe modifier 
and we got the Ottoman army organization for five years or we should conquer the Balkans get claims on stuff that we pretty much already have with the exception of Crete and Serbia I'm gonna go for this I need the research bonus thank you very much and I don't care about a little bit of extra infamy to get Serbia and Montenegro I mean come on Ooh, that's a lot of votes for the good guys Still a lot of votes for the bad guys though, so eesh. at least the Ulema joined the agrarian party Which is good for the next election because the Ulema also has decent support. Let's see what we can do now legislation wise Ooh, no, no big no. <laughs> no, no, no. Hell no. Come on literally nothing good, bro What about this mix here? This is uh, not really great, but we have some options. I guess wealth voting census vo Let's try wealth voting. Let's give it a go. Oh, check it out, boys. We got one agitator for getting rid of uh, slavery. So with a little bit of luck, we actually will be able to get rid of this sooner rather than freaking later because it's 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 taken a while. It's definitely taken a while. Unless I go to civil war, it's not as easy as it would otherwise be, right? I'm kind of thinking about the civil war option too. If this guy doesn't make his uh, magic work, then I, I definitely will go down the civil war path, I guess. This is perfect. 23.1 support for, uh, for banning it is great it's wavering a little bit but it's better than it was before by a ton actually truce is over again with egyptians so it's time for war number three and we're gonna go for crete as well as the northern bit so we connect our lands and then after we can also annex tripolitania since we can do it but i'm just gonna do it after of course i finish the war with the egyptians oh boy egypt only has 10 battalions left. Ugh. I need to make these primary because they have 10 battalions. It's telling me that they likely will give up whatever my demands might be. Or at least there's a chance of that happening, right? Jesus, it's like we're speedrunning the conquest of Egypt. Holy... Calm down, soldiers. Calm down. Revolution in Arabia. Ooh. Okay, maybe the guys that win stop being the uh, protect protector of... Um, British. Yeah, they're a Dominion. Okay, so the, the non-Dominion one, I hope you guys win. <laughs> Another thing that was added with 1.5 is the companies here. Now we have a couple of available companies we could go for and I'm likely going to go for this one since I want to get the fertilizer plant a throughput. But considering I don't have railways and I'm actually struggling with infrastructure a little bit now, I'll do this one for the time being and then I'll change afterwards maybe. We have a lot of potential companies here that will be available as we go along in the campaign as long as we uh, have specific prerequisites met every country has its own unique companies with their own unique uh, modifiers that's what makes the game absolutely really great now and this really adds a ton of flavor and replayability which is something that vicky3 was definitely lacking before so do make sure to make use of your companies boys i'm also going to start reducing the autonomy and my protectorates in tunis as well as in serbia so that eventually i'll be able to uh, make them full puppets and then afterwards annex them too now I did lower my taxes to uh, medium taxation. I'm gonna keep it here so the overall my population gets a little bit wealthier and a little bit better i also waited for a while to lower my debt because i had a lot of debt now we can go back up and we can start properly constructing things i uh will need to boost my construction efforts triple my construction efforts actually now that i think about it it's time to properly industrialize we've got most of the lands that we want to expand to in the early campaign what's missing is just hejaz which i will attack once the truce is over and uh, of course the rest of egypt plus with a couple of incomes Incursions into Africa, but that's definitely doable whilst we're in the process of properly industrializing obviously Looks like the Serbians are fighting this uh, lowering of uh, autonomy feels bad man Tunis was pretty freaking cool about it, but hey, whatever, man. Sure, if you guys want to be like that, I don't mind. Let's get in the Prussians here. Give them um, states. Give them the state of South Tyrol. Looks like they want that from the Austro boys. I'm cool with that, Austria. You want to fight me, bro, for Serbia? You want to start a world war just because of Serbia? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Who would even do that? I am a little bit worried, though, because the Austrians likely have much better ships than I have. 
So I'm kind of relying on the Prussians here. Come on, Prusso Boyski. Help me out, please. Please, please, please help me out here, bro. Oh my god, are they actually not gonna do nothing? No, they're attacking in the south. Okay, at least they're doing that. On the bright side, we are crushing the Serbians, so we're getting the war goal, right? Come on, we're crushing the Austrians too. What? Hold on a second here. What kind of troops they got there? All right, I need to see the Austrian troops. It, it seems to me like the Austrian troops might not be as uh, chatty as Maximus as I expected them to be. In fact, they might be Shkaboba de Minimus, which is really bad for them. It's definitely really bad for them. Yep, yep, definitely really bad. The Ottomans are at the gates of Venice. I mean, uh, Vienna. I meant Vienna, okay? I meant Vienna. Gates of Vienna once again. And my war target is uh, also uh, Dalmatia. I got my uh, stuff in force in Serbia, but I want to take one province from the Austrians. Since they attacked me, we might as well take this. It's got 500,000 almost GDP and 400,000 population, so we can make use of it, obviously, right? And freaking of course, dude, whilst I'm at war, I'm getting a revolution because I'm trying to ban slavery. I mean, it's so bad. Come on, game. Freaking come on, dude. Oh my lord, I gotta assign my units there now. Bro. <laughs> I hate this game sometimes. I really do. And I love it, but at the same time, I hate it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It's not Gucci, revolutionists. It's not Gucci, bro. You need to stop this. You need to stop this right now. Okay, let me try and figure out where the F my armies are actually. There you go. We managed to get Dalmatia, and we got uh, war reparations from the Austrians, so that's pretty nice. Plus, Prussia managed to get a few lands here, so that's juicy. Now let's win the civil war so we can uh, become a proper civilized nation. And don't need to worry about the landlords anymore. Look at that, guys. 84% chance of enacting this. Hells to the yes. We're gonna try and control the Balkans first. And then move from the Balkans into the rest of the country, I guess. That's why I said my main army over here. Hopefully they win these battles. Otherwise, we are screwed. You know, getting to 88 freaking success chance and this still not passing. Is akin to getting 88% siege progress in E4. Is disgusting. Hallelujah. 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 Finally, let's continue with the good legislation. Homesteading, 74%. Don't mind if I do. And we managed to crush the aristocratic revolt, meaning we've got everything we need, boys. We have the lands we need. Actually, we need to take Hejaz, so almost the lands we need. And the Trucial States won. Oh, they're not. Oh my god, this is actually the best thing ever. You know what? I'll make this save available to anybody that wants this on my Patreon or as a channel member because this is some freaking seriously good RNG. I think you guys might enjoy playing this as well after. But as I was going to say, we got the lens pretty much or we will in the next couple of years. We have the population, we have the legislation, the right party in charge, and we're actually on the way towards completely revitalize the Ottoman Empire. So I'm super hyped for this run now. Ooh la la, no more serfdom. Let's go check what else we can advance now. Oh my god, so many good stuff. Agrarianism, definitely next since we have a lot of support for this too. We get rid of that nasty traditionalism. This is essentially our time to shine and modernize this nation. Let's get more construction sectors since we have the economy too to do so. Basically, I'm going to double the amount of construction sectors that I have. Integrate the uh, newly conquered areas here. Or actually, it's already incorporated. Well, oh, right, because it's part of the Trucial States. Never mind. Makes sense. Let's attack uh, Hejaz 2. Conquer state. Thank you very much. And do they have two states or one? Apparently, they got two states. Let's get both of those. Because of these awesome reforms we're doing, we also managed to get up to 9.8 standard of living, which is significantly better than it was throughout the entirety of the rest of this freaking campaign. Oh, look at those beautiful, beautiful, beautiful borders, lads. Hurrah, Romania has been formed, lads. Look how beautiful it's on the map, man. Seriously, I'm totally not super biased. I'm just saying, making an observation that it is a very beautiful color. That's all, nothing else. We are a little bit late with this, but after we get capital t per capita taxation, we're gonna get a ton more money. And guess what? We have 27% chance to start with, so it's gonna be fairly easy to get this enacted quick. Whoa, what's going on here, buddy? Oh my God, look at all that. Okay, that is not Gucci, is it? Yeah, the, the Austria might be in a little bit of problems here, judging by the amount of um, unrest, let's call it in their lands. Hey, on the bright side, guys, now we're also gaining a lot of loyalists. We went from basically no loyalists to having 3.6 million and so on. Same thing here, losing a lot of radicals in the process. And we just got per capita taxation. Hey. 
close to the yes boy looks like we can get more construction sectors done too let's uh let's start speeding that up and you know what i'm definitely gonna just max out all of the freaking logging camps that i have here since uh wood is always gonna be needed even if i'm importing i'm still lacking a lot of wood so i'm just gonna get as much as possible from the get-go can we get an f in the chat for the uh for, for for no more egyptians is that something we can get an f for or is it too weird i'm also consolidating some of my units so i have uh bigger armies i feel like i've had way too many smaller army groups so i'm just trying to get like seven or eight main 30 battalion sized armies give or take also another major breakthrough is uh, getting religious schools is going to help out with improving our literacy significantly despite having a pretty rough start we managed to centralize the ottoman empire fix its issues and making it the strongest nation in the area with a bright future since now we're absolutely crushing it with our industrial expansion so i'd love to see the the second part and if you do too don't forget to leave that like and until the next time check out my awesome france vicky 3 video and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support